Please feel free to enter questions as they arise into the chat. And we will hold off to answer questions until the end of our presentation. If we don't know the answer to your question, we will look into it and get back to you and the rest of the field. Thank you for joining us today. Next slide, please. Our information buffet menu today includes an overview of the verification process and a question and answer period. We hope to wrap this up in 30 minutes and we'll plan on offering another information buffet soon. Next slide, Dan. So the eligibility manual for school meals, which was last published in July of 2017, is your best friend. There has been no update to the manual and it will be used for this school year. Refer often to this section of the manual for specific details on how to perform the verification of free and reduced price household applications. And that would be section six of, uh, that talks about verification. We recommend having the eligibility manual bookmarked on your web browser and referring back to it as questions arise. Easily search the PDF manual using the find function by, by clicking control F on your keyboard and searching for key terms. Oops, my papers are blowing off. Next slide, Tam, please. <clears throat> the verification effort um, is the confirmation of eligibility status for free and reduced price meals serve to children in your SAU or RA under the National School Lunch Program. And of course we are all running, uh, or most of us are running SSO this year, um, but you are still collecting applications which are used for other uh, program funding. Verification is only required when eligibility is determined through the application process and not through direct certification conducted with an assistance program or with agencies or officials who documented other source categorical eligibility. Remember, verification of household applications should be done using copies of the applications. The copies should be kept in a separate verification file with all documentation relating to the verification of each application chosen. Next slide, please. <clears throat> um, I think we went ahead one. Yes. Uh, when, right. When is verification? Thank you, Tam. Verification is required to be completed by every year by the SAU or RA by November 15th or by December 15th when an, with an approved state agency waiver. An email has been sent out by our office that includes the verification effort plan of action form that needs to be completed by each SAU and emailed to Tam Feener in our office. The form can be found on the Office of Nutrition website under the NSLP link. Go to the verification link in that section. And remember the verification effort is not determined on a school or individual district uh, for sc in school or individual district applications, but as been, but on the SAU or RA as a whole unit. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the reference documents listed are key resources that you will need in order to successfully complete the verification process for your SAU or RA. The top three bulleted regulations are included in the eligibility manual, which is on this slide, bullet number four. And this is, as we said, the most recent manual and is the, is the document that verification officials should use as guidance. And the link is there. Next slide, Tim. <clears throat> are DC eligibilities part of verification? Directly certified DC students are not part of the SAU RA verification pool. If 
a household fills out a free and reduced price school meals application for meal benefits and provides a food stamp number. And if that household does not appear on the direct certification list, that household cannot be considered directly certified and the application remains in the verification pool. Verification efforts are not required for categorically eligible children who are designated as foster, migrant, homeless, runaway, or Head Start. Categorically eligible children are considered DC if they are on the DC list or authorized by McKinney Bento representative. Household applications that include a SNAP number are included in the verification pool. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so these are the key verification dates. There are several uh, that you need to be aware of when you start the verification process. The process starts on October 1st of each year and must be completed by November 15th of each year. If your SAU or RA is unable to meet the November 15th deadline, a waiver may be requested from the state agency. This waiver must state the reason why your SAU or RA cannot meet the deadline of November 15th and must be signed by the superintendent of schools. <clears throat> if a waiver from the November 15th deadline is granted by the state agency, your SAU or RA must complete the verification process by December 15th. For New Hampshire, the online verification summary report for school food authorities, the FNS 742, must be completed by December 31st. Next slide, please. The completion of the USDA SFA verification summary report, the FNS 742, must be completed annually online with the form being filled out by the designated SFA verification official. If you don't know who your verification official is, you would have to ask your administration. And just a note that the FNS 742 that the verification official will complete is part of the My NHDOE online system. And there is a tab that will show up for the verification official. Next slide, please. Um, so the determining official should be sure that the application is complete with all the required information. And the determining official is the one who uh, looks at all applications that have come in and does the math uh, for the eligibility determination. Please refer to the eligi eligibility manual for guidance. Remember that the confirming official must sign and date the back of the income eligibility form the household application to document that they have checked the eligibility of the application. You can attach your calculations to the copy of, of the applicant, calculations to the copy of the application selected for verification. And you're also, uh, you can also put notes on the application. Please do not make any changes to the information that the household has entered. Next slide, please. Okay, on this slide, we're showing um, some of the outcomes. So each confirmation review of applications that is done is individual. Therefore, there can be different outcomes. And this slide gives you an idea of some of the different outcomes. Um, you'll be able to see this uh, when the slide show is put up on YouTube. Next slide, Tam. Okay, here is the verification effort procedure. The SAU must select a sample pool of all free and reduced price school meal applications from the entire SAU or RA that were on file and approved as of October 1st. Um, Multi-districts must 
complete the verification by the SAU, as we said. And the verification sample pool is based on the number of applications received, not the number of children represented. The confirmation reviewer, as we said, determines the accuracy of the original eligibility determination for the meal benefit of the selected applications before the notice notification of selected selection letters are sent home to families. And um, it's important to know that if there is uh, an error that has been made that the confirmation confirming official uh, puts the correct information on the application, the determination. Next slide, Tam. So this uh, goes through the requirements for application selection. During the verification process, the SAU or RA must use a standard sample size uh, from the error prone uh, applications based on the sample pool. And error prone means the total household income reported on the application is within $100 a month or $1,200 per year, up or down, of the application applicable income eligibility guidelines, which are also found on our website and that you probably already have. SAUs or RAs may not verify more or less than the required minimum sample. If 3% of error prone applications selected results in fractions or decimals, application selection must be rounded upward to the next whole number. So if your number of 3% for applications comes out to 2.7, you are going to review three. You're going to verify three. SAUs and RAs cannot discriminate in the selection of applications to be verified. All questionable applications are verified. That is called verification for cause, and that is discussed in the eligibility manual. Complete the verification by November 15th of each year unless the waiver for an extension was granted. The sample size is 3% of applications, as we say, and we remind you that you must round up to the next whole number if it's a fraction. And randomly select from error-prone applications first, which we talked about um, what defines an error-prone application. Next slide, Tam. Uh, so let's see, I'm on the wrong page here. Okay, uh, use any method giving each application an equal chance of being selected, including both SNAP and TANF applications and income applications. And remember, do not select any directly certified students. So you'll want to cross check with your DC list. Randomly verify a minimum of the lesser of 3% or 3,000 of the total number of SAU RA approved error prone applications on file as of October 1st. And at least one application must be verified. Next slide, please. What happens if you don't have enough error prone applications to meet the sample size requirement? There may not be enough applications that meet the error prone criteria. When this happens, the SAU or RA must select at random additional approved applications from the sample pool to complete the required sample size. In other situations, the number of error prone applications may exceed the required sample size. When this happens, the SAU or RA must randomly select the required number of applications from the available error prone applications. Next slide, Tam. <clears throat> um, this slide talks about uh, zero income when it is listed. Uh, there is a zero income listed on the application. 
any income field left blank is a positive indication that no income of no income and certifies that there is no income to report. When no income is provided for any household member, the application is still considered complete. And I just wanted to make a note here that a complete application does include the last four digits of the uh, signer's social security number, or it must indicate that there is no social security number and also must be signed and dated by the household member completing the application. So it can have zero income, but the social security number or lack of that noted and signature is required for a complete application. Next slide, Tim. So household notification. All households that have been selected as part of the verification process must be notified that they are required to provide information. Please refer to the eligibility guidance for school meals manual, uh, page 106 specifically, that outlines what must be included in the household notification letter. There is a sample letter template on our ONPS website. The SAU or RA must complete the verification process for all households that have been notified of their selection for verification. And again, please refer to the template documents posted on our website in the verification section of the NSLP link. Next slide. Um, when households fail to submit the required documentation, uh, you can, you have to make at least one follow-up attempt uh, by, for, for non-response, and that can be made by regular mail, email, telephone, or text. Be sure to document all attempts and results. Households must still be informed that eligibility status, must be informed that eligibility status will be changed if there is no response. Verification is complete when notification of adverse action is sent. And you may get questions about why is it important? Um, and if they, if they don't respond, they'll be moved to paid status. They, you should remind households that that will roll over for the first 30 days of next year, the next school year. Next slide, Tam. Completion of the verification effort. Any changes to the eligibility status of the household application, whether it be an increase in benefit or a decrease in benefit, requires the SAU or RA to send the notice of adverse action to the household. Please note that a letter of results is required to be sent even if there is no benefit change. And again, the letter templates can be found on our website. It's important to note here that if uh, the verification results in a higher level of benefits, the change is effective immediately, but must be made within the three days. And master rosters and point of service um, systems must be updated with the new eligibility status, even if you are operating SSO. Next slide, please. So this continues um, the verification effort. And again, um, please note that if the benefits are being reduced or terminated, a letter of adverse action is sent to the households giving 10 calendar days advance written notice. Uh, again, and you'll see the reasons there. Again, you can find the templates for the letters on our website. Next slide, please. Appeals. If a household appeals the determination decision within the 10 calendar day grace period, the SAU or RA must continue to provide benefits to the household until the hearing is held and a final determination is made. 
The SAU or RA may continue to claim reimbursement at that level during this period. And if a household does not appeal within the 10 ca calendar day grace period, reduction or termination of meal benefits must take place immediately after the 10 calendar day grace period. Next slide, Tim. If the hearing official rules that the benefits must be reduced, the actual reduction or termination of benefits must take place no later than 10 calendar days after the hearing official's decision. And again, the master roster and point of service system must be updated with the new eligibility status. Households affected by reduction or termination of benefits may reapply for benefits at any time during the school year. Next slide, please. So this is uh, important to note, reapplying for benefits. So households that are affected by a reduction or termination of benefits due to a non-response to the verification request may reapply at any time during the school year. However, these are not considered new applications. Households must submit income eligibility documentation or proof of participating in the food stamp SNAP TANF programs as originally requested during the verification effort process. This will start the re-verification effort process with the submitted documentation. If a household that was selected for verification, a new application can be submitted at any time during the year, as we said, and the new application will be subject to the verification process and documentation will be required. Next slide, Tam. So that is it for our verification information buffet. And we've made it to the question and answer portion. And please feel free to type them into the chat box and we will get to as many as we can. Do we have any questions? Hi, Marty. We don't have any questions at this. At this. Okay. So oh, we have some other question. If you'd like to chat that in, Jackie. And anyone else feel free. We do have seven minutes, so we have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> we know it's a lot of information in a short period of time. Um, we, our next slide, just so you know, we'll show the USDA non-discrimination statement. And I'll just put a reminder here to include the non-discrimination statement on any communications about child nutrition programs. And if the entire uh, non-discrimination statement will not fit on your document, you may use the last sentence, this institution is an equal opportunity provider. The font must be no smaller than the smallest font in the document. And we'll just wait for the questions. All right, we have some questions. So I pulled my applications for verification last week and started the whole process. I calculated 12 applications. I did everything necessary and mailed out the documents to the households. On Friday, I checked my DC list as I do on the 15th of every month. There are, were two new families on the DC list that had already sent in applications and were on my verification list? That's a good question. 
Yes, so uh, what you will want to do is just document that after you sent out the request for verification that they were um, found on the DC list and you can notify the families um, that they do not have to uh, comply and, and send in the documentation, but be sure to keep a copy of the DC list on which those students appeared um, and make sure it is dated and you have initialed it and you keep just that page of the DC list with their name on it or whatever you have as, as the documentation, put a copy in the verification file along with the copy of um, the notification that you sent to the family. Excellent, thank you, Marty. Mm -hmm. So there, just a follow-up question to that same one. Do I need to pull two more applications to replace those two? Um, that is a good question. I'm going to look in the eligibility manual to, uh, to find that answer, but you can also do the same. I want to be sure I'm giving you the correct information. Um, it will be found in the eligibility manual. I do not have that in front of me right this second. So um, we will uh, send that answer out. Great, we can send that out when we send out the recording to this. That would be great. And Patty put in a nice comment to everyone as a reminder, it is important that even if you have zero free or reduced lunch applications for this school year, you still need to fill out the online 742 report. Thank you for that reminder, Patty. <laughs> yes, thank you. All right, we have another question. Would you please repeat what you said about the use of only copies of the applications during the verification efforts slide? Sure, so you want to keep all of your original applications as received in your current school year folder. So the original applications are all kept as the original applications that were received and the determination of eligibility was made. Then for the verification process, you'll want to copy that application, both sides, and use that uh, in your verification, keep that in your verification file by application. So for instance, if you have 12 applications, um, that have been selected for verification, you're going to copy those 12 applications, put them in a separate verification file, either electronic or paper, and uh, keep all documentation, notification of the household, notification of results, any documentation they submit for uh, income eligibility, all the information that you receive as part of the verification process will be kept with that copy of the original of the uh, the copy of the household application. So keep your originals together and for the verification process you'll copy the application for the selected verification uh, process. Marty, can I step in for a second? Yes, yeah. please. Go ahead, Patty. So I just want to um, just want to the reason we want you to keep a copy in the verification file is, is so when we come out to do an administrative review and we need to we need to look at those, you know, we'll be looking at those verification files and we want to see that everything is, you know, from the application to the letter you sent or letter versus an email, however, you know, you sent it to the reply to, you know, you notifying that whether they're staying at their level or not. Um, that all needs to, that's what we'll be looking for. Um, and we, we don't want you to have to go, you know, and, and then if we're looking at your free and reduced applications and we're verifying, you know, we're looking at those to see if you did it correctly and you're missing one, oh, that's in my verification file. Well, no, that's why we want you to keep all, um, all your originals together and then keep copies of everything for the verification. Now, regarding the other question regarding, um, kids showing up the DC list, because they showed up within the time frame of you um, asking 
for verification of those, those children, that is considered, you're verifying it that way. So because you're gonna, you're gonna take a copy of that DC list for that month, make sure you have dates on there and you'll put that copy with the application and with a copy of the letter that you're gonna notify the parents that you do not need anything at this time because they did show up on the direct cert list. You do not need to pull two more. It's not like the parents are not replying to you. You're actually saying, wait a minute, I've got the information. This is verified, we're done and good to go. I hope that answers everybody. Thank you, Patty, that, that was very clarifying. <clears throat> All right, excellent. We just had a question about where the um, sample letters are. So I just chatted in the link to our website. This is the direct link to the NSLP portion. And if you scroll down, you'll find verification. But if you're just on our office's website, you'll click NSLP and then verification. Then a couple more questions. I know it's 201. We're going to be recording this, so we'll post it. If you have to jump off now, we understand, but we'll try to finish the questions at least that are in the chat currently. Where can we find the example letters? We already did that one, sorry. Um, and then there's a question about the slides. Sometimes the slides, if we send them to, um, if they're full page slides, it's too much for our email to handle to send out to everyone, but we'll make sure to get just the slides themselves up on our website. So you'll be able to have the PowerPoint um, on a larger scale um, from the website. So we'll make sure that. And then it looks like right now there's only one more question, Marty, which is, okay. does the schedule stay the same even if our application still hasn't been approved? Yes, it does because uh, you're still receiving household applications and you're going to uh, choose the sample number from the number of applications that you have received by October 1st that have been um, determined. Excellent, thank you, that's it, Marty. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, Tam, if you wanna put up the last slide with our email information. Thank you all so much for joining and uh, we will talk to you again soon. Thank you for all you're doing. Bye-bye.